you also get your chance to tell your side of the story uh, surrounding the peptides scandal that did engulf the Cronulla Sharks. So what have you told us? Can you give us an insight into what, what we'll learn? Yeah, look, basically I just wanted to tell my story. You know, it's been um, a long time coming. You know, things, you know, the Dark Stain Sport was in 2013. It was a two-year investigation into the club. Um, you know, it was all wrapped up in 2014 where we took a, a backdated suspension. And I was pretty quiet throughout that whole time, you know. There was obviously the whole club and the whole team involved and I never told my story. Um, now, there's reasons I didn't do that, but I just want to be able to tell my story in the book. I, I, I actually believe that athletes are responsible for what goes into their system. You can't just have someone tell you, take this, it's going to be good for you, it's not illegal, and then all of a sudden you, it's found to be illegal and you say, but he told me to take it, you know. And all I want to do is tell my story that I was totally responsible for what, ha for what happened at Cronulla. You know, I spoke to the relevant people I needed to speak to. I did everything that I was trained to do by the NRL and by ASADA, checking their website, making sure it was all fine. And from my point of view, there's no more, no more responsibility I could have taken to ensure what I took was not illegal. And that's the story I wanted to tell. And Gail, you talk a little bit about your childhood and how it was really challenging. Do you think that will give a little bit of hope to youngsters who maybe don't have the perfect childhood, aren't born with a silver spoon in their mouth, that they can still be successful? Yeah, without a doubt, I think so. I mean, you know, my childhood up until the time I was you know, 11, 12 was quite normal and good. And then uh, my parents got divorced and ran into, ran into a few dramas and troubles and probably never really had uh, any sort of mentors or anyone to sort of help me through that time. Lived with my father, lived, lived uh, not alone, but, you know, fended for myself a fair bit. So, yeah, I, I actually spoke to Wayne Bennett about it in the tour I had with him one day, and, and he said, you know, there's certain people that shouldn't be where they are. And, uh, you know, I think hard work and dedication is something that helps me get there. So, yeah, without a doubt, if I can help inspire any, any young kid along the way who's, who doesn't have everything going their way, then, you know, I'm happy to do that. And that's part of the reason I wanted to do the book. I just wanted to be able to tell my life story and how I got to where I am now. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of things that happened along the way. Some, some good, some bad, but there's not a lot I would change, to be honest with you, because where I'm, where I'm at today with my family and my friends, I'm quite content, quite happy where I'm at. And, um, you know, to change things that have happened along the way may change where I'm at at the moment, so. And you get to spend your Sunday with us. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to harp on it, but the drug saga and what you've been through, have you ever taken the time to speak to anyone at Essendon Footy Club in the AFL that obviously went through something similar? Look, I, I had no idea about what happened at Essendon, and, and to be honest, I never uh, even really followed what happened there. I think they were two little bit different situations, but I do remember receiving a phone call from James Hurd, um, we were offered a deal at 24 hours basically to make a decision on whether we would accept a backdated suspension or try to carry on ourselves. And, and James Hurd rang me and he said, there'll be no player at our at Essendon that will plead guilty to taking illegal drugs because they weren't illegal. Um, they were not on any ban list at the time, which what we were given wasn't either. Mm. Therefore, there'll be no player at Essendon that will plead guilty. Now, if you remember at that stage, they were actually found innocent. It wasn't until later on that, that uh, WADA appealed their suspension and, and they were suspended later on. So James Herb was one I spoke to. And then after, um, after the Essendon players were eventually found guilty, which was some months later, uh, I did contact Joe Botts and myself and just, you know, I don't know him, I've actually never met him, but yeah. I just sort of wanted to give him a little, little bit of support. The, the thing about being a club captain, which I was and he was, you know, there's a whole other, there's 20 odd other players involved, all right? And I guarantee if I ask any one of you on this panel right now to name one other player from Cronulla, you, you, you probably couldn't name one other mm. player, but everyone can name me. Now, Joe Watson is the same. Exactly. So that's why I ring Joe to say, look, mate, I understand what you're going through. If you ever want to chat to anyone about it, this is my number, give me a chat. I, I give me a call, we'll have a chat about it, but um, yeah, I, I never spoke to him again, but um, hopefully he's okay. Did, did he are you disappointed though, Gal? You've had this unbelievable <laughs> long career, like 18 years in the NRL. Premiership winner, the Sharks' only ever premiership. You captained them, you did that. You stuck solid through these years and you did that. You won an Origin series against the best state of Origin team ever in history, yet you put out a book and everyone wants to yeah. talk to you about this weird thing. I hate it. I hate it. And it's, uh, but unfortunately, I can't, I can't get away from it. You know, the book deal when we first did it, the, the, Alan and Alman said, mate, we don't even want it in there. We don't even want you to talk about it. You know, we, we're sick of hearing about it. And I said, I, I couldn't write a book and not put it in there. I'd get hammered by <laughs> certain people in the media. Yeah. Just We'd be hammering you here now. Yeah. Yeah. So I, had to, I had to address it. And I, and I wanted to tell my story. That's all I wanted to do about it. Look, I don't blame anyone at the club for what happened. I, I wasn't forced to do anything. Um, but I just wanted to tell my story that I did everything I could. I took responsibility as an athlete for what I took. Um, I checked it. I made sure it wasn't illegal. Um, unfortunately, it turned out to be illegal. I can't change it. I've accepted it. I've moved on with my life. And yeah, it, it is a shame that's all we, all, that's yeah. all spoken about today. Again, 
But um, as I said, it is what it is. There's some great highlights there that we were just seeing. Of course, third place in a Cox Plate as well. <laughs> that would have been another chapter, Gal. We might win chapter. it next year. Hopefully, we'll see you next year. We've won it. And a victory over Barry Hall to come. Oh, oh very yeah. true. Ooh. How are the preps going? You... Oh, the, the, the preparation's going good. I'm, I'm extremely busy at the moment with a lot of other things, but one thing I am not neglecting whatsoever is my training. You know, I sparred yesterday morning before jumping on a plane and going to Melbourne. Um, I'm, I'm leaving no stone unturned to be prepared for the fight. and. Uh, come November 15 down in Melbourne, I'm looking forward to it. You want longer rounds, don't you, so you can yeah, cast yeah. them out? Yeah, I, I think it's embarrassing. <laughs> but you know, we're, we're professional athletes fighting in a big fight and Barry won't fight three-minute rounds, which is what boxing is. We're fighting two-minute rounds, which I think is totally embarrassing. <laughs> Barry, man up, let's fight three-minute rounds and box properly. Have a proper <laughs> boxing <laughs> event, OK? Man up. Yeah, I've, seen, I've seen Gal do some sparring and I've got a tip for Barry Hall. I'd work hard on this. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. All right, you heard him, Barry. You, go, like. you heard him. And don't, don't punch me. I'm just <laughs> punch him. Punch him.